20 kids onto Washington Street. Your son has been a danger to himself. He's not dangerous. He's a challenge. Nobody wants to do the work. Now I see where the dangerous behavior comes from. Shut up! You know, I can't remember the last time I saw a TV show or a movie show a loving father who is present in their child's life. For the most part, we've seen portrayals of broken homes, absentee fathers, and just a general disdain for positive male role models. So imagine my surprise when a movie comes along like Ezra. But aside from the loving father, how does this movie hold up? And should you go see it? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. A few weeks ago, I got roped in by my two YouTube buddies, Deleted Scene and Sin from Sin's Corner, into going to see the AMC Mystery Movie Night. Now, for those of you who don't know, both AMC and Regal here in the US put out advanced screeners of upcoming movies. But you don't know which movie you'll be seeing ahead of time. For $5? Who am I to complain? After the movie, myself, Deleted, and Sin livestream our thoughts and opinions on the movie. You can see our in-depth discussion of Ezra by clicking the link in the top right corner now. But for those of you who don't want to sit through two hours of our rambling, I'll provide you with a more condensed version of the review of Ezra. So the movie's plot follows Max Brandel, played by the wonderful Bobby Cannavale, who is a once successful late night comedy writer turned less successful stand up comedian. When the movie opens, we see a man who struggles through both the failure of his career and the failure of his marriage. To add insult to injury, Max's son Ezra is severely autistic. Despite remaining at odds with his wife Jenna, played by the ever so cute Rose Byrne, we see both parents struggle with how best to raise their son and provide a loving and caring environment. Man, if I didn't know any better, this movie looks like it could have come out of Angel Studios' Christian production company. Throughout the movie, we see both parents at odds about how to raise Ezra. On the one hand, Jenna wants a more rigid, structured approach, where Ezra goes to a special school and takes psychiatric medications to control his autism. On the other hand, Max wants Ezra to have a normal childhood without having to be ostracized in a special school or drugged up by Big Pharma. At no point does the film actually choose a side about how best to approach raising Ezra. Both sides are presented equally well and quite fairly. It's really funny how when I came in to see this movie blind and without any expectations, I grew and evolved after seeing this film. Dealing with an autistic child clearly isn't easy. In the beginning, my mind kept harping back to the times of the ancient Spartans who would throw defected children out into the fields to get eaten by wolves. Despite this very draconian thought, the movie was patient with me and showed me how wrong I was to think that in the first place. Throughout the movie, as Max makes his way to LA for a late night show performance, we see his relationship with his son grow and evolve. And throughout that journey, we see how loving of a father Max truly is. At a couple points, he very much loses all control and starts bawling. One poignant moment was when he got so frustrated with Ezra that he very nearly hit him. But afterwards, we see how utterly destroyed he was at the thought of almost hitting his child. The deep sadness he felt was beautifully portrayed by Bobby Cannavale. The turning point of the film for me was the scene on the farm with the horse. The pair arrive at one of Max's old friend's farmhouses. Ezra goes to play with the daughter out in the field, who takes a warm liking to Ezra and shows him a level of compassion and understanding that hadn't been clearly shown to him up to that moment. She guides him through his fear of the metal spoon and to ignore the feeling of the metal and enjoy the taste of the ice cream instead. With this simple gesture, Ezra begins to come out of his shell a little bit. But the most poignant part of this whole sequence was the scene with the horse. The girl shows Ezra the power of love. The scene showed how much an animal's innocence can help us humans. This is where my thoughts about the situation began to change. They evolved into defining what compassion can do to improve our daily lives. And that's just the thing. The movie shows us that there is a way out from all the political division and hatred within Western society. It shows us that there is a better way, the road of compassion. This sort of positive message is lost when those so-called journalists in the mainstream media have to spin it into hate for something positive. Most notably, the film review in the New York Times makes Bobby Cannavale's Max into some kind of villain for wanting to raise his son right and provide a loving environment for him. 
This is exactly the level of toxic that the progressive left has brought to society. And this is my biggest gripe with what happened with this film. The mainstream media is so obsessed, so utterly consumed with division and hatred that they have to tear down something that shows compassion, love, and positivity. Because as we all know, the more divided we are, the more easily controlled we are. But Ezra bucks that trend of negativity with its positive message. And perhaps if more movies showed positive male role models instead of beta male cucks as they have been during the dark age of cinema, we could get people back in theater seats. Overall, this is a movie that is extremely well done. It takes care to approach the topic with sensibility and compassion. At no point does it shove down any one particular way of approaching this very delicate situation. It provides both parents' point of view and methodology, and then it provides the more sensible, middle-of-the-road pedagogical approach. And that is the film's biggest strength. Underneath it all, it shows the importance of good pedagogical child psychology that very carefully treads the fine line that comes with dealing with mental illness. This movie probably won't be for everyone, but if you're willing to give it a chance, I think everyone can learn something new and become just a little bit more compassionate in the end. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Ezra? And what do you think about its portrayal of autism? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.